human engineering, CRISPR, designer babies, and the future of intelligence, looks, and illness. I'm Jay Faza from the Rebel.media. Biological human engineering is a topic that most people have a difficult time wrapping their heads around. For starters, this seems like something that belongs in a sci-fi film or sci-fi novel or the distant future. This technology also inevitably involves subjects like ethics, law, morality, and so on. But the technology of human engineering, as in editing human genes for medical or superficial purposes, exists. It's called CRISPR technology. What CRISPR basically does is alter the genetic coding of a human embryo. A human embryo is one of the earliest stages of human development. The human embryo has its own genetic coding, metabolism, growth, and reproduction, so cellular division. So unlike what most people say, or what some people might say, it's an individual biological human life. But since it's still an embryo, the cells are placid and malleable enough to allow biotechnicians to manipulate the direction of development. And by the way, this is not theoretical. The reason I'm reporting on this today is because recently, American scientists were able to edit the DNA of a human embryo to correct a congenital heart condition that would otherwise emerge if the embryo was naturally developing. This news to me is both scary and pretty exciting. On one hand, we have the ability to edit illnesses even before they manifest. But on the other hand, we also have the ability to edit much more than just illnesses. In fact, illness is just one side of the die in regards to human engineering. Again, the human embryo is placid, malleable. The majority of behavioral traits and physical characteristics are developed in the fetus and infantile stages of human development, not embryonic. So basically, with CRISPR technology, you're able to edit the human being into something, any sort of recognizable superficial trait that you want them to have. This is something popularly called designer babies, a process where parents can genetically engineer children while in vitro for selectively specific traits. These traits can vary from which eye color do I want my children to have to do I want the Y chromosome within my child to make them a boy because the Y chromosome enters into the human embryo later on within the embryo's development and so on. I know the term playing God is overly used, especially around conservative circles, but in this case, without a doubt, this is literally playing God. I mean, just to give you an idea of how much we're playing God here, a biotechnician, for example, can cultivate many generations of humans within a lab, then through a series of tests determine which embryo is most likely to have the highest IQ. Finally, the biotechnician can implant that intelligent embryo within a mother through in vitro fertilization. If this is done to one mother, we can have another Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. If it is done to many mothers, so a million mothers, we can have a million Isaac Newtons or a million Einsteins. Designer babies, especially with CRISPR technology, can fundamentally change the human condition forever. Again, this is not theoretical. This is technology we currently possess. These are ideas we've known for years. It's only been recently done by scientists in America, whereas in China, CRISPR technology has been used in medicine for almost a year now. Remember when I said that human engineering to me is both scary and exciting? Well, for the most part, besides playing God, I've only really explained the upsides of human engineering, like eliminating illnesses, increasing human intelligence, and so on. But here comes the more serious downsides of human engineering. How in the world do we properly implement this technology? If, for example, you allow the free market to naturally handle this technology, so you allow parents and biotechnicians to do this within a free market, free from government regulation, then two things could possibly occur. The first is that there can be an intelligence and health gap between the rich and the poor because the rich can afford to have superior designer babies. The second is that modifying the gene pool within humanity and a free market could lead to a lack of biodiversity because there's no regulations to ensure biodiversity, which could ironically lead to medically degenerative defects down the road. And what about the child's consent, or in this case, the embryo's consent? I mean, yes, they can't consent. I mean, they're embryos after all, but neither can an infant. An infant cannot consent, which is why I'm against circumcision. How can we properly assume what is in the child's best interest while they're still an embryo? How can a parent even assume what is in the child's best interest as they're still an embryo? Maybe they don't want blue eyes. Maybe they don't want to be a boy and so on. These are human beings we're talking about. Do they not have rights? I mean, as a pro-lifer, I think they have the right to life and self-determination. But I doubt someone who's pro-choice would agree to the embryo's right to self-determination. They would probably lean towards the mother having the right to do whatever she wants with a baby, even if that means genetically editing them without proper consent. And that just doesn't sit well with me. In our society, it's okay to kill human embryos. They don't have any rights. 
Once you kill them, they're not our problem anymore. So, I mean, who cares about them, right? But just editing them means that they'll grow up. And that means we have to deal with them and the effects that we cause them. If we don't like the genetic edits that their parents gave them, how do we deal with what has already been done? I mean, even if we had strict government regulations on this, ignoring all the underground businesses that might occur from this, we still run into the moral problems like consent, weighing the parents' rights, with the child's right, with society's obligations, and so on. After all is said and done, once it goes beyond curing people of their illnesses, which this technology can easily do, and I support that, we run into a number of moral and ethical dilemmas that I can't support and that won't be solved anytime soon. And that's why I draw my line at illness. To me, you can use CRISPR technology to design your baby not to have illness, but anything more is opening Pandora's box. I draw the line for practical reasons, but also moral reasons too. I think it's obvious that CRISPR technology can be used for good in the realm of medicine. But besides that, the abuses for this technology are abundant in the current system that we live under. There's virtually no way we can prevent the gap between the rich and the poor from occurring. Even if government starts to regulate the industry, it can still go underground. And if you think internationally, now we're significantly more intelligent than the third world. The inequalities between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have not here are nothing compared to the types of inequalities we have internationally. Imagine all the chaos we would have between the rich and the poor domestically and internationally. It could lead to conflicts, it could lead to wars, it could lead to arms races, as in intelligence races against China, for example. We're not ready to implement this worldwide. But even if we could negate those consequences, those horrible negative consequences, I'm still against this technology being used for anything besides medical purposes because I think the human embryo shouldn't be manipulated, tampered, or killed, or anything like that. I believe they have the right of bodily autonomy. They are their own human being, after all. So if we're not clearly helping them through medicine, we might be going against their wishes, and that's wrong. Again, I don't believe in circumcision because it could possibly be against the baby's wishes in the future. So why the heck would I support this? That's just my opinion, though, but alas, it's up to government officials to decide what's law and what's public policy, not journalists. Government officials from North America have, with exception to some labs, banned genetic testing on human embryos. However, much of East Asia, Southeast Asia, Russia, and some parts of Europe have yet to codify law on human genetic embryonic testing. That's mostly because these and many other questions don't have an easy answer to them. I didn't make this video to give you an easy answer. I made this video to report to you, the viewers, what's new in the scientific world, the problems that could emerge because of it, and a little bit of my opinion. But I want to know what your opinion is. What's your thoughts on this topic? What's your thoughts on human engineering? Do you think it shouldn't expand to things outside of medicine? Or do you think we should use this technology to overall better humanity despite the risks? Leave a comment down below. I'm Jay Faza, Rebel.media. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, like and subscribe to Rebel.media. And please, if you're sick and tired of YouTube silencing conservative content creators, click on the link below, theycantstopus.com.